welcome to another episode of The Common Man's Take on Sports with Kevin and Quentin. Alright, <clears throat> today I want to shift gears a little bit and uh, talk about Simone Biles. She's a gymnast and so she just won her record 8th national all-around gymnastics title. Um, nobody has ever done that before and she just did it. And that was after taking a two-year break. So um, just to put a little uh, history on that. So the all-around championship means that she won uh, four out of four events in the women's gymnastics. So that's pretty impressive for her. Congratulations to her for doing that. Um, she is probably one of the probably the best gymnasts ever because she is pretty talented so uh, if you ever get a chance to look up her story it's a pretty good read um, for her story of how she came up um, with that we will move on and we're going to talk about a little bit of Major League Baseball and so we made some predictions a couple episodes ago. I think it was episode four. And so let's go back and revisit those predictions that we made. Let's start in the American League. So uh, Tampa Bay fell out of the uh, division leader. Baltimore is now the division leader at 83 and 50. Tampa Bay is in the wild card at 81 and 52. Seattle is now a division leader at um, 75 and 57 however Texas so is tied. Texas <laughs> so they're tied right now uh, and then Minnesota is still leading their division at 69 and 65 so um, that looks like that's shaping up to be a close race there between Seattle and Texas. When you look at the wild card, obviously only one of them can win that division. And uh, we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Let's take a look at that division. You'll have to give me a second. Uh, yeah, so. Houston's also in that division, but uh, yeah, Seattle and, and Texas are battling out for uh, that division lead spot. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, one of them will stay up there, and the other one will more than likely get the wild card. Uh, and then you have Houston at 76 and 58 for the wild card, but Toronto is still winning, and they are 73 and 61, so they're right there in it. Um, so they could very well bump Houston out of that spot if they keep winning and Houston loses a couple. So uh, that's uh, turning to be a pretty tight race there between Seattle and Texas and then uh, Houston and Toronto. So we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Still a month left of baseball to play. So anything can happen. Anybody can get hot and cold. Um, so we'll see what happens in the American League. Unfortunately, um, my team, the Yankees, are not going to make the playoffs this year. However, they did make a couple of significant moves that um, I'm glad they finally did. They cut uh, their third baseman. Josh Donaldson. Yep, Josh Donaldson. Um, they never should have re-signed him this year, but, you know, hey, things happen. Um, he had the worst year of his career this year, and so they cut him. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to the – or. Uh, before we move on to National League, what, what are your thoughts on the American League, Quentin? Uh, my thoughts on the American League are false. Because Baltimore uh, are division leaders. Okay. Seattle, Texas, Minnesota are also there. Uh, I also think Toronto can... Uh, can bump Houston in that final wild card spot. Uh, 
Yankees did make a good move by cutting Josh Donaldson. They did make a good move. Um, they're they're in the. They've accepted that they're not going to uh, do anything this year. So they're right now they're making moves to prepare for next season. That that's where they're at in their process. So. Okay. Um, a couple episodes ago, I said that I had uh, some expectations for Detroit. I have no expectations for them now. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of uh, yeah. went a little downhill, didn't they? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on to the National League. So you got Atlanta, who's still hot. Um, they did almost have a uh, mishap, though. I I saw a story about it. So apparently during a game last week, uh, there was some fans who jumped out on the field to confront Okuna. And when security got over there to take the fans down, somehow uh, Okuna got wrapped up in it and almost got hurt. So that could have turned out really bad for them. He's okay. I mean, he's he's fine playing still, but you know that's one of their uh, top players right now. Him and uh, Matt Olson. Matt Olson. So you know you don't want to lose a player of that caliber to something silly like uh, you know confrontation on the field. So yeah, they got to be careful with that. But yeah, you know, they're still hot. Eighty six and forty five and seven and three in their last ten. Dodgers eighty two and forty nine uh, leading their division. And then you got Milwaukee at 74 and 59 leading their division. Your wild cards shaping up to be Philly, Chicago. the Cubs, the uh, Diamondbacks, and the Giants are now tied. And then you have the Reds right behind them. And uh, that My, Miami's kind of close, but they're they're falling off. They've they went three and seven in their last. 10 games. Uh, the Reds are 5-5 five and five and the Giants are 5-5 five and five and the Diamondbacks are 7-3. And three. so and the Cubs are 7-3. They're, they're both winning right now. So, uh, you know, the Cubs are still only uh, two games ahead of the Reds. So, um, the Reds are still in it. I don't care what you say. It's still a month left. I know you, you predicted the Cubs would take the wild card and so far right now they are. All right, 71-62. So, Still a tight race though. I'm still looking at uh, for the wild cards. You're looking at Philadelphia and the Cubs, and then those last four teams: the Diamondbacks, the Giants, and the Reds are all right there. All have 69 wins. Uh, the Diamondbacks and the Giants only have 64 losses. The Reds have 66, but that just means the Reds have played more games so far. So. Uh, again, all 69 wins, so they're all right there tied for that third wild card spot. What happens if we're both right? Cincinnati and the Cubs both make the wild card. We both get ice cream? Probably. <laughs> well, I will say that you called out the Diamondbacks. Last time we talked in episode four, they were not in the wild card. They have made a run lately, and they have now positioned yourself squarely in that wild card race. So. Um, good, good pick, good prediction. Well, I gotta give you that one. They definitely have. They're seven and three in their last ten. So yeah, they're. Although they have lost their last two, but um, they're definitely playing good baseball right now. So we'll see what happens there with them. But uh, they went on a little run there. So, what's your take on the National League and what you think is gonna happen? Wow, you're changing, shifting gears there? You think they will? Yes, yes. Interesting. Go ahead. Uh, I think the Giants will replace them in that wild card. Okay, not a bad pick. I have no hope for the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> we'll see. They, uh, all, they all three have the same record, so anything goes. Anything can happen with a month left of baseball. Even if the Reds are one game behind the 
Diamondbacks and, and Giants, I have no hope in this <laughs> right now. Uh, the Marlins. The Marlins are. Yeah, question they're, right they're, now. they're not they're not gonna make it the Marlins aren't gonna make it they they can't get out of their own way either 66 and 66 I don't think they're gonna make it they're kind of out they're about three or four games out from the Two other three so they're the other teams are real close they're not that close I mean three games isn't much in baseball but I just don't think they're gonna pull that off I feel like they may pull it off, but it's it's right now question. It's it's kind of a question right now. So we'll see. So going back, um, here's my picks for what's going to happen. I think that uh, Baltimore will move on to the um, American League Conference Championship. I think they will play the Texas Rangers or the Houston Astros, whoever slides in from that division. And I think that Baltimore makes it to the World Series. And in the National League, I think the Braves end up playing the Dodgers for the National League Championship. I think the Braves win that and move on to the World Series. For my final prediction, Braves win the World Series, four to two. I just think the Braves, right now, they look like the best team in baseball, and I think it's going to be tough for anybody to beat them. Um, okay, for my AL prediction, I think Baltimore and Seattle will meet up because Seattle is uh, one of the most surprising teams I've seen in baseball. Mm -hmm. the playoffs just like the Cubs um I think Seattle will slightly get to Baltimore and advance to the World Series okay and then we move I on. think you don't know what you're talking about but please continue Well, at least you got one pick, right? <laughs> ah, that was very fun. Very, very <laughs> fun. Very fun. Go ahead. Um, oh, so it's a tough one right here in the World Series. Um, I think the... Right now, I think... For me right now, I think the Atlanta Braves can just slightly get over the Mariners. Slightly? Slightly. Have you seen the Braves this year? They, they look are good. Slightly, slightly. Have, have you seen? Here, let, these, have hey, you seen Seattle? Ha, didn't Atlanta win both of their regular season series against the Seattle Mariners? Let me check that. Pretty sure they won both series. Let me see. Got you covered. Here we go. The Atlanta Braves. They might not have played the. No, they. Oh no, no, they actually did. Let's see. They won the series two to one mm -hmm. in May. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that was back in May when the oh. Seattle Mariners were struggling. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. April? How, what were the scores of those games? Okay, let's see. Uh, the scores for those games. The first game they won was 6-2. Mm-hmm. And the second game they lost 7-3. And the third game they, they won 3-2. Okay, okay. Not, not too crazy. All right. I 
stuff going on there. Yeah, that's the only time they ever play them. That's the only series they ever play. All right, all right. All right, so you think the Braves barely beat the Mariners 4-3, to three, huh? Well, we'll see how that prediction works out for you. Yes, barely. All right, Maybe so... Maybe 4-2. to two. I think it's going to be like 4-2. 5-1 or 4-2. to two. That's my pick for the Braves. So, uh, let's go move on to... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I said 5-1. to one. I meant 4-1. Uh, four four to one. One. Four to one or four to two is my prediction for the Braves. No, no. So let's move on to a little bit of college football since this is opening weekend for uh, the actual opening weekend. Uh, they'll play games all weekend long starting tomorrow night on Thursday. They'll play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So um, let's uh, let's talk about. Some of those games this weekend. Oh. I'm excited that college football is back, and then you know what comes back the next weekend after college after this weekend? Uh, NFL. Oh, so yeah. we'll have a lot of football to watch. Yep. A lot of football. So let's check out. All right. So Thursday nights, Utah and Florida. Ooh, might watch that. that. That might be a pretty good match up there, Utah and Florida. Nah. So Saturday you have uh, East Carolina, Michigan, uh, Virginia and Tennessee, TCU, Colorado. Let's see. Let's let's just pick out the big games here. Let's let's skip these these cupcake games. Um. You have Ohio State and Indiana. That might be a good one to watch at 2.30 in the afternoon. You have... Uh, Colorado TCU? Yeah, that would be a pretty one, good one to watch. That might be a pretty good game. See how Deion Sanders does in his first game coaching. Uh, Penn State and West Virginia might be a good one. Um, LSU Florida State? That's gonna be well, that's, that's on Sunday. So I'll, I'll watch that one Sunday for sure. That will be a good one. LSU and Florida State. And Duke and Clemson might be a good one Monday yeah. to watch. Duke is usually deceptively decent. I don't think they're going to beat Clemson, but you never know. Uh, um, so I'm ready for some college football. I'm ready to take in some uh, Michigan football because I'm a well-known Michigan fan. I watch Michigan football, basketball, baseball, uh, wow. whatever I can see. So uh, I'm excited for Michigan sports to start back up. Yeah. Um, any games you're looking forward to watching? Um, let's see. Well, there is one. I feel like there's just one. Yeah, I'm definitely eager to watch Michigan play their first game. Yeah, see how that goes with J.J. McCarthy. Uh, starter, first game. Okay, let's see. And um, Ohio State, Indiana. That, that one might be an interesting one as well. I, I think that would be a good one to watch. I'll, I'll probably watch that one. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll probably watch that Washington Boise State game too. I'll probably flip back and forth. I'd like to watch that. Oh, yeah. Sometimes Boise State's got a pretty high flying offense there, so I'd like. I also like to see how Washington does because if their defense is what I think it's going to be, USC is going to have a long season. Yeah. I'd like to get a watch a little bit of that. Well, I don't know about Oregon, Oregon and Portland State. I, I may have to wait till they play somebody good enough to gauge think, how their defense is. Um, I would also like to watch UNC and South Carolina and see how Spencer Rattler 
Yeah. Seven stuff. I'll probably watch that one. That's probably a good against, one to watch. Yeah, against Drake May. I don't know. That'd be a good matchup right there. Um, that's pretty much all. Maybe, maybe Virginia, Tennessee, maybe. Mm hmm. See how Tennessee, the backup QB, does um, starting. Yeah, I'm ready for some uh, college football, and then I'm ready to watch some. Although I know I'm going to be disappointed, some Panthers football uh, the next weekend on Sunday. I'm going to be really disappointed, I think, this year. But that's okay; they're rebuilding, so hopefully Frank Wright gets them going in the right direction. Yeah. I know the U.S. Uh, team has been pretty doing pretty good in the uh, FIBA championships this year. They uh, haven't lost yet, so that is a good sign for them. Uh, FIBA World Cup, they uh, just beat Jordan the other day, 110-62. to They've been dispatching uh, teams pretty good. They're 3-0 and currently, so that is uh, good. We'll see if they finish out and win the uh, whole thing or not. But uh, I've watched a couple of games. I haven't got to watch them all. But uh, Paulo Bencaro has been pretty impressive in those games. Austin Reeves has been pretty impressive in those games. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I can't remember the other player's name. He's been pretty impressive. Too. He plays for Minnesota. Anthony Edwards. That's him. Yep. Thank you. Anthony Edwards has looked pretty good too. So they got a pretty good core there. Players. Uh, Halliburton's looked good. Uh, so yeah, they, they got a really good team. Uh, I've enjoyed watching some of their games. I haven't got to catch as many as I'd like to. But uh, yep, they've been pretty good in the FIBA World Cups. Yeah. Um, you got to uh, see any of their games yet? So you should uh, you should watch them next time you get the chance. They're uh, they're pretty good, pretty good. They play again on Friday and they play Montenegro. So uh, yeah, that, Friday yeah. at, uh, at yeah, well we'll record that one. We ain't watching that at three thirty in the morning. Ooh. I'll record it for you so you can get a look at the USA team, but they're. I think they're doing pretty good. 3.30 in the morning. Yep, 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> uh, it's because they're playing overseas, so uh, time difference. Yeah. So I see that uh, Joe Burrow practiced for the first time the other day, so I told you I wasn't really worried about him coming back. Even if he misses the first game, they're going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, they're in Cincinnati, so... Uh, I think it is a good sign, though, that Joe's uh, practicing. That means that whatever calf strain he had wasn't serious, and he's able to start participating and uh, working with the uh, other players. So that's always a good sign. Okay, um... Yep. Anything else you want to... Uh, covered while we're uh, here. I do see that uh, the Colts are still mishandling the Jonathan Taylor situation. Um, they did not trade him because nobody, like I said in the earlier podcast, nobody wants to have to pay the price that they're asking um, and then not know if he's going to sign with them or not because they didn't pick up a fifth year option so once this season's done it's over so who wants to give up all that compensation with no no safety net or no guarantee he's going to be in there there he's going to be with that team any longer than you know this year so i that's a blatant mishandling of the jonathan taylor situation by the colts um, and it, it's unfortunate that uh 
that they did that. I think that they um, they have created some animosity between player and team, and that never works out well for either side. Um, but I can't blame Jonathan Taylor if he has a little animosity for the team for how they've handled it. Um, I mean, they could have done a sign and trade where they signed him to a contract and then turned around and saw what kind of trade offers they could give. Obviously, teams were interested, right? The problem is they don't want to give up the compensation without a little guarantee that he's going to be there longer than this season. So they could have worked out a deal where they signed him to a few years, you know, maybe a three-year contract, and then, you know, traded him to another team. And the teams would have been more, you know, open to trading because there's, there's a little bit of safety net right there. They knew they'd have three years to try to convince him to stay there if, you know, he stayed injury-free and did well. But, you know, a player that that there's no guarantee he's going to be there past one year, nobody's going to give you a first-round draft pick for the unknown, right? Would you? Do you own a team if you were a team owner? No. Would you do that? No. no. So it's a shame that the coach are, are treating him that way. Um, you know, I think it's unfortunate. Uh, I think the Colts owner needs to take a step back and take a long look at himself in the mirror and try to do right by the play. I, I understand trying to do right by the team, but he needs to also try to find that happy medium in that middle where he can take care of the player and the team too, right? Like You, you always want to try to do that to keep both sides happy and get, get the deal done that you want done. So, uh, unfortunately, him and the GM are, are completely mishandling that situation, and they continue to mishandle it. Um, and it's unfortunate that, that it is that way. And so the Colts are mishandling it because they know that next year, even if they don't pick up his, even though they did pick up his fifth year option this year and he's going to be a free agent next year, they know they can always fall back on the franchise tag and franchise tag, which is also unfortunate. Um, when that poor kid's trying to get paid for his services, which he is one of the best running backs or better running backs in the NFL, he's just trying to get paid like one before it's, you know, his career is over. So I can't blame him. It's unfortunate the Colts are, are mishandling that whole situation like that. Um, the, when people wonder why players are, are so uh, adamant about taking their taking care of themselves and not worrying about the team, this is a perfect example right here of how a team calls that because they're mishandling the situation and not trying to find a a good exit strategy for both team and player, right? They're they're really taking the wrong path for this. Um, Do you have some thoughts on that? No, but um, there is something that happened yesterday. The Ravens re released Melvin Gordon. I saw that. I knew that he would be a long shot to make that team. They have Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins. Um, and I know there's a third running back on that list that's pretty good on that team. So uh, I figured that that was a long shot. They were just trying him out uh, to make the team. Uh, I, I didn't think he would make it. Yeah. I thought they were just trying to try him out to see if he could get a spot mm -hmm. in that 53-man roster. And it didn't end as he probably planned it to. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, all that I have for the show today. Do you have anything else that you would like to add? No, nothing else. All right, well, we will end the show for today. We thank you for listening, and if you haven't already, we hope that you click the subscribe button down below continue to listen to our podcast we enjoy all our listeners if you guys have any uh, any requests please go to our facebook page drop your requests in a comment for any topics you'd like us to discuss or uh, and we will uh, try to discuss them on the next episode until then thank you for listening and have a good day